Hi again. So this video is going to take you just a little bit further with some of the other features of PebblePad that you can choose to use and really build up a great portfolio of your evidence of learning and your learning journey. So one of the things that you might want to do is to add some more things into your portfolio. So you come over here to the add new menu and there are all sorts of things you can add. We're going to concentrate on the file for now but as you can see there are quite a lot of other menu items here that are worth exploring. But for now we'll just have a look at how to add a file and this could be any type of file. You can upload PDFs and pages documents, Word documents, JPEGs, video files. So there are all sorts of files that you can add in here. So today I'm going to go and browse for what I would like to add. And I think um, for my design course, I think I'd like to add some packaging photos. So I'll come here to where I've saved them in my folder and open that packaging photo up. Design photo. Okay. Before I go ahead and, uh, and upload that, there's a couple of things I'm going to do. Firstly, I've got to acknowledge that I'm allowed to upload that content. And then I think I'm, like, I'm going to tag this and I'll show you the benefit of that in a minute. But I'm going to tag this for my design course and press enter and I've made a tag. Alright so let's save and upload that photo and that's finished processing and I can close that. Now of course the natural question is where did that go and as you remember with your workbook it's going to live in your assets, in your assets store. So we'll come to that and there's my design photo there. You can see I've tagged it. I've tagged quite a few of my items within my portfolio so that I can find them. There's no folder structure within PebblePad and you can categorize things by documents or by designs or even by some of the media elements that you've uploaded. But it's also really handy if you're going to be using it for a few different courses or throughout your program to get in the habit of tagging for your course codes or things that you think you're going to use them for down the track. The other thing you can do is do some designs. You can design some folio pages and make those into a web folio. You can watch videos on how to do that within the PebblePad Help and I'll show you that in a moment. But I'd just like to show you an example of a finished web folio page. So back in my asset store, I come to my ePortfolio and I want to view that. Now it opens in a fairly familiar view and as you can see I've got a banner at the top. Those banners are completely customizable. If we click on edit you just drag, click and drag across the top of the screen and you can edit that banner which actually edits the complete theme of what you're looking at. So let me give you an example. The one that I've chosen at the moment is this one so we'll just preview and if you go to the full screen preview it actually opens in another window and will show you in full screen mode how that whole theme looks from the menu design right through to the overall look of the whole page. So it's a really neat way to wrap up a lot of your work and make it really presentable. If I go ahead and change my banner, for example, let's have a look at a different view here. And we'll just have to save before you can view it. Preview and then full screen preview. You can see that completely changes the look and feel of my design. So all the navigation links have changed and the look of my portfolio is quite different. So you can have a play with those different themes in your time as you're designing your folios. Okay, so you can also customize things like your background and your appearance, colors and all that sort of thing can be customized. You can choose different photos, so that's where you find that in there. You can build your own templates and workbooks. You can build all sorts of things for yourself throughout this ePortfolio space. Of course, there are so many more things that can be done and we can't possibly show you them all in one video. But the Pebble Help is actually fantastic. They've built in some really good resources and videos to show you how to do all I've mentioned and a whole lot more. So if you come to the Help, we'll just look for now at the Pebble Help. So when you come into your Help area, you'll notice that the navigation 
down the side here actually mimics the navigation along the top of your Pebble window. So it's really easy to find help on all the different topics. So if you wanted to add new and you come down and look through what that is, or if you wanted to design maybe a new web folio page, come across and click on that and you'll see that there's actually also video content as well as all these written resources with lots of screenshots and lots of tips. So you can also come and look at that video content and have a look at creating a web folio or other things that could be related to that particular resource. So the Pebble Help is fantastic and I really encourage you to make use of that wherever you can because it will walk you through in really great detail how to complete pretty much anything within your ePortfolio. Of course, the more you use this and the more you get used to using it, the more that you will get out of it and the more that it will evidence your learning journey across your entire program or degree. Another thing to remember and one of the final things that I'll say for now is that you have complete control over the things that live within your asset store. Now, of course, if you've got to submit something for assessment, then you're agreeing that you're sharing your work with your tutor and that will be viewed by people who are marking it for you for assessment. However, perhaps you want to share something that you've discovered, found, written, videoed with somebody else in your course or somebody else in the external world. That's really easy to do. And it's actually really easy to give control to who gets to see it and how much they get to see. So if I wanted to, I could share that particular photo. And I can share it here. If you've used that person before, they'll come up from your contacts. Otherwise, you just need to do a search for the username. Now, I have control over what I'm going to let that person do. Can they comment on my work? Can they copy my work and use it for themselves? How long do they get to do that for? Is it ongoing? Or can I put an ending date on that? And there are some other advanced permissions that you can look up as well. So you do have complete control over what happens. I'm going to give some copy permissions there and I'm going to make it end on the 23rd of July and share that. You can always see when you've shared something because it comes up with a green dot here under the shared status. Now, if I've shared something and I'm thinking, you know what, actually really I'm not comfortable with that. I don't really want to have that shared right now. You can come over to the I, to the information on that asset. And there's a whole lot of information here for you, including your share status. So I can see that I've shared it. You can edit that share. So at any time you can come in and actually, do you know what, I'm going to unshare that with that person. And then they no longer have access to that thing that you've shared. So as you can see, this is a really powerful and versatile tool and it's here for you, it's free for you to use while you're here and after you leave. You can definitely take it with you. So make the most of it and uh, enjoy exploring what Pebble can offer to enhance your learning journey.